make a kind of random video talking about a kind of, not discovery I made, but like a kind of realization I had with sound. Um, so very quickly, just as an introduction, I've been playing around a lot with this uh, thing that you can see on the screen right now called Strudel, which is basically, long story short, just a way of using JavaScript code to create music or create sounds, right? Um, it basically acts like a DAWS, a digital audio workstation or whatever it's called, but you write it in code rather than doing it on a graphical user interface instead. And so I've been playing around with sounds and I have no musical experience really. So it's been quite an awesome and weird learning uh, kind of experience for me where I've been learning about music and sounds, but not through a traditional avenue, like an instrument. Anyways, so I've been playing around with sound waves. So just as a very, very, very quick and rubbish recap, a sound wave in real life is pressurized packets of air which oscillate or are vibrating at a certain frequency, oscillations per second, and we perceive that through using our ears and like these like micro micro hairs in our ears or something as a pitch, as a kind of frequency. We know you know exactly what I mean. And basically, kind of digital sound is almost a reversal of this, where instead of sound waves being kind of being able to be represented by mathematical waves, instead, in a digital sense, we take a perfect mathematical wave, such as a sinusoidal wave or a square wave, and we synthesize the sound from that. We basically say, if, that's, if that was a real wave, a real air wave in real life, what would that sound like? So we're synthesizing the sound from the mathematical wave. I hope that made a wee bit of sense. Anyways, as shown on the screen, I'm about to play um, the frequency of 200 hertz. That means the sine wave is going to be oscillating at 200 times per second, i.e. it repeats its cycle uh, 200 times every second, and this is its sound. Hopefully it's not too loud. It almost sounds like someone's phone vibrating. It's a very kind of dull, quite boring sound, let's be honest. But then, and, and sorry, just uh, for clarity, the wave you can see below is that sine wave. You can see it being played. Now, let's change the wave to a square wave. So now we're gonna have a square wave which repeats this square oscillating pattern 200 times every second. But it's at the same frequency, 200 hertz. It sounds very different to the sine wave, despite being the exact same frequency, 200 hertz. And I, for the longest amount of time, just didn't understand why this was the case. Because in my, like, from my very crude understanding of music, I was like, if the frequency of the wave is the pitch effectively and how high we hear the sound, then why would a sine wave and a square wave played at the exact same frequency sound very different? And moreover, they sound very different, but kind of fundamentally, they kind of sound very similar. Um, I would say the sine wave sounds quite like dull and flat and kind of monotonic. Like it, there's just kind of one sound there and it's that dull humming. Whereas the square wave is a lot fuller and brighter and buzzier. Um, but at the same time, there is that kind of like similar sound. And I guess I always wondered, why is that the case? And so I thought about it and I was kind of determined not to use the internet too much. And all I knew was from class, uh, being a math student, was that, was about Fourier series. And what is a Fourier series? Well, Fourier series basically tell us that any wave can be deconstructed into a sum of sine waves, right? So a square wave in particular can be represented as an infinite sum or series of sine waves. And let me show you this on Desmos. Hopefully, oh, that's not Desmos, that's Zoom, which I'm using to naively try and show my face whilst also recording the screen. So anyways, here is a segment or a section of a blue square wave shown in Desmos, okay? Uh, I've not done the whole thing because it's actually just really awkward to try and uh, do a square wave simply in Desmos, but here, here you go, right? So hopefully we all understand what I mean. And that's the buzzier sound that I was playing earlier. Now, here's a sine wave at the same amplitude um, and frequency. 
So they're obviously very different waves, right? The square wave, for one, is smooth, is not smooth. Almost by definition, it's square. Whereas the sine wave is, is smooth in a kind of like intuitive and more mathematical sense as well. But they have the same amplitude, meaning the same vertical stretch, or same like height, effectively. And they have the same frequency. The square wave and the sine wave both repeat. And in this case, it's um, one oscillation kind of every two units. But it turns out that there's an infinite series of sine waves which recreate a square wave. And that's the Fourier series. And I'm going to show it in purple. So at first, the purple wave does not match the square wave at all. But as we add more and more sine waves, we start to get something which looks like it's kind of approximating a square wave. You're probably watching this going, that's not a square wave, that's just something which goes up and then kind of bobs around the kind of flat line of the square wave and then it goes down and so it repeats. But that's only with two waves, n equals two in this section. But as we increase it more and more, we start to get something which does indeed approximate a square wave more and more. And as we start to chuck in 12, 20, gosh, 30 sine waves, we start to get something which really does look quite a lot like a square wave. But do not be mistaken, this is a sum of sine waves. I'm not going to get into the details of it, although I could do a video on how we actually find out what the Fourier series of a square wave is. It's actually a bit more simple than you might think. But um, this is the kind of equation for it, if it or, or the expression for it uh, shown here. Uh, so it's 4 over pi times some series. And yeah, there's some kind of like um, number which we're affecting the amplitude of the sine waves by. And then, yeah, we have all these sine waves with odd frequencies. And we know they're odd with 2n plus 1. So yeah, there's a... And just to be clear, the true Fourier series of a square wave is an infinite sum of sine waves. We need an infinite number of different sine waves, particular sine waves as well, to create a square wave. But computers, alas, do not have infinite memory. And so we must take a finite approximation or a finite series. Um, but it turns out that with just 50 terms, and remember 50 is quite small in the bucket of infinity, um, 50 already gives a really quite decent approximation, at least by my standards of um, finite series approximations. So uh, yeah, we can see that the sum of sine waves does indeed create something which is very square wave-like in resemblance. And just to kind of show what the individual uh, terms of that series look like, the first term, the first sine wave, is precisely the sine wave I showed you at the start. It's the sine wave with the same amplitude and frequency as the square wave that we're trying to approximate. And as we start to uh, look at the kind of terms further into the series, we see that they get a lot smaller in amplitude, i.e. smaller in height, and so they're going to have less of an effect over the entire sum, but they also have a higher frequency, i.e. there's kind of more oscillations every second. Sorry, I feel like I've repeated what frequency means about 10 times, or by 10 hertz, uh, in this video, even though if you're watching this video, I'd hope you know what frequency is. But yeah, as we see that we increase n, if we're looking at like terms deeper into the series, uh, yeah, they increase in frequency, but they decrease in amplitude. And maybe you see where I'm getting to. But basically, my, my thought was that perhaps as we start to play a bunch of sine waves on top of each other from this particular Fourier series approximation, we will start to get a sound which sounds more and more like a square wave. And maybe that's why a square wave sounds fuller and buzzier and brighter and just different. And indeed, that is the answer. Let me show you what I cooked up. Uh, I mean, I hacked together, kind of vibe coded this thing called square wave demo. Hopefully this works. It's going to be confusing. My face is going to show twice. Um, and yeah, at first let's play square wave. This is so poorly done. And I'm really sorry for this noise, but you can hear this kind of like buzzy 8-bit, almost like Super Mario sounds being played at 200 hertz. And that's a square wave. It's not perfect. I'll turn it off. Annoying. Sorry. That was a bit annoying, but yeah, that's a square wave noise being played kind of very frequently at 200 hertz. Sorry to get those two types of frequent uh, mixed up. I'm playing the square wave sound 
many times in a short duration of time and it's at 200 hertz like the pitch is at 200 hertz so now let's start playing a bunch of sine waves on top of one another I don't even know if you can hear that, but at first there's just this low humming sound and that's a sine wave being played for a very short duration at 200 hertz. But I've added this feature in where basically depending on the size of my hand um, or, or my, the distance from my pinky to my thumb, <laughs> uh, really randomly, um, it will play a certain number of sine waves from the Fourier series approximation. So as we start to outstretch my fingers, we're playing more sine waves from that Fourier series at once. And as I fully stretch them out, there's probably about 50 sine waves playing at once. We definitely get that square wave sound, that buzzy sound. It's kind of fun. I was enjoying playing around with this. And just to compare the square wave one last time, let's see if it sounds similar at all. I'm actually a bit unsure. Yeah. That obviously doesn't sound the exact same, but it does sound very similar. And so what I thought was correct, a square wave will sound exactly like its Fourier series. If you played all the sine waves from its Fourier series at the same on top of each other, um, and that kind of makes sense because if you think about it, it would be a very it w if a Fourier series didn't sound like the wave it was trying to represent then actually it wouldn't be fair to say that the Fourier series is equal to the, the square wave and uh, our notion of equality would be really rubbish if the sounds didn't match, so actually we would fully expect the sounds to match and so tying this all back to the, kind of the original question I started on, and sorry I've been quite um random with how I pre presented this but why does a square wave sound like a buzzier fuller version of a sine wave well it's because it's not just one sine wave getting, getting played at once but it's actually an infinite it's if in effect an infinite number of sine waves all being played at once so there's a bunch of different frequencies all being played all at once at different amplitudes smaller amplitudes um, and that creates this buzzier, brighter, and fuller sound than just the sine wave, which is literally a monotonic sound. It's just a hum. Whereas a square wave is a bunch of different waves all being played at once. So that's why they sound different. And they might not have sounded the exact same for two reasons, on the, three reasons on this video. A, the microphone on my laptop is rubbish. B, my program doesn't deal with sound, maybe totally correctly, so... That's my fault. And see, you got to remember, I was only using a finite summation of sine waves to create a square wave approximation. I wasn't doing the true Fourier series, which is an infinite series. And remember, 50 is a very small drop in the bucket of infinity. So, of course, they don't sound identical. But nonetheless, they do sound very similar. So finally, why do a square wave and a sine wave at 200 hertz sound so different but there's something kind of fundamentally similar about them they sound very different but at the same time they kind of sound like they're from the same ilk and it's because the largest sine wave in this in the Fourier series of the square wave is precisely a sine wave of 200 hertz which i showed you on desmos at the start the kind of first term is precisely the sine wave which matches the frequency and amplitude of the square wave. And musicians uh, that know about this stuff, and I'm not one of them, uh, would call this the fundamental frequency of the square wave. And that's why fundamentally the square wave and the sine wave do sound similar because the sine wave is also being played at the highest volume for the square wave. It's just there's a bunch of other sine waves, particularly in particular these ones, that are also being played at the same time to kind of fill out the sound and give the square wave the iconic sound that it has. I don't know if that made any sense at all, but that excited me when I had a thought. I was like, hmm, square waves are basically an infinite sum of sine waves. And so I kind of hacked together a program and yeah, I actually did get the sound. And I was like, holy crap, like, yeah, that is why a square wave sounds that way. It's just a bunch of sine waves 
being played at once. My batteries are in, but it's run out, so I need to uh, wrap this up quickly. But it doesn't stop at square waves. As I said, Fury series, uh, or, or like the kind of result that Fury series is, is a very strong result, and it says that I believe any wave under pretty mild conditions can be represented as an infinite sum of sine waves. And so we can actually kind of decode why all these different waves that aren't sine waves sound the way they do by kind of um, deconstructing them into their Fourier series representation. And so instead of doing a square wave, why don't we look at a sawtooth wave and listen to this bad boy for a second. Buzzier again, different from a square wave. Why does it sound that way? Well, let's look at the sawtooth Fourier. Sorry for my bad typing. This is so unpolished. This is a sine wave. It doesn't sound anything like a square wave. I don't even know if you can hear that. That certainly sounds a lot more like a sawtooth wave. Just one last time, because I'm actually not sure. I was fully convinced that they sound the same. I'm trying to remember that sound. Yeah. So they definitely don't sound the same, but they did sound, that Fourier series did sound quite similar to the sawtooth wave, at least to me when I'm listening to it in real life. And the reason I suspect that they don't sound the same is A, because I've not written my code perfectly, so it's probably playing the sound a bit oddly, and B, I've simply not selected enough terms in the Fourier series. Um, I've not selected enough terms in the Fourier series to really get a, a faithful approximation of the sawtooth wave. But yeah, I'm going to leave the video there. I basically just wanted to share something that I was excited about, and it's the fact that the reason that kind of synthetic sounds sound the way they do is precisely because of Fourier series. And my flatmate Stevie, who studies like acoustical engineering and sound design, she probably knew all this and probably is like, duh, you literally learn that in first year, mate. But it was fun to come to the conclusion by myself. So yeah, I'm going to try and post some more um, strudel stuff and kind of maths and sound wave stuff in the future because it's really interesting me at the moment seeing these kind of two things come together. Uh, but I hope you watched and enjoyed uh, and maybe you understood Fury series. Um, and if you didn't, that's okay. This wasn't really meant to be an explanation of Fourier series. It was just meant to show that if you did know what Fourier series was, maybe you'll understand why a square wave sounds the way it does compared to a sine wave, supposedly under the same frequency. So yeah, thanks for listening.